All right, welcome back to Let's Play Bitburners, episode five now. So we've got our Hacknet script and we've got our main script. What I promised for this episode was some kind of logic. And I've been thinking for a couple hours how I wanted to structure this. And what I've decided is I'm going to build a script that's like a precursor to all of the other scripts. And I'm going to call it init. The goal of init, I'm just going to write this in a comment, is to spawn a uh, the relevant processes, um, well, subscripts maybe is more accurate, given the status of the game. And what I mean by this, and I know it's not super clear, uh, but like take the hacknet script for instance you probably don't want to spawn that the first time you load up a, uh, the game you may not even want to spawn it the second time but sometime you'll want to spawn it uh, when you've got some minimum hack level uh, you're making money you can quickly get to you know your initial faction goals or whatever you'll want to spawn it but then maybe you don't want to spawn it anymore after you've got the netburners faction or i don't know why you would want to do that but the whole point is you want rules for when hacknet is going to initialize likewise we're going to do a stock market script later and you'll want rules for when the stock market script will spawn and so the point of this init script is to identify the logic behind what's going to spawn and I've decided I'm going to pass into it just an argument, which isn't going to mean anything except status. Let's status equal nsarg0. And what status is going to be is like an integer from 0 to 100, representing how many times we've reset. So that's what's going to be. Uh, if we've reset, if we've never reset, we just started, it, we're going to send in zero. If we've reset once, we're going to send in once, twice, twice, and so on. This is going to give us some kind of, I mean, it doesn't always have to stay how many times we've reset. It could be anything we wanted to pass in. Um, but this is going to give us something to base our logic on that has real implications for the game. Um, first thing I'm going to do is pull in the player model that we made last time. That's over here and get player. It's called base player. I'm just going to instantiate that with player becoming the, the player name. And well, let's start with the easy one. If player.market.api, that's how it goes. Player market API for Sigma. So this is a variable that will be true if we have the completely automated stock exchange uh feature it's like 30 billion ton lock we don't have it now but if we have that we want to spawn a stock market script actually i'll probably use run in this script it's a little bit cheaper than exec and i don't intend to spawn anything on any other servers so i don't need exec and let's do if status is zero we'll just spawn our regular go.js now what are we going to do if it's more than zero 
Here's what I'm gonna do if status is less than less than two. Um, on later iterations, we'll probably want to spawn the hacknet script. Actually, I'm just new else. And then if you remember our hacknet script. I'll pull that up. It's a very, very basic script. Um, just gets you to the bare minimum of having net burners. But we should probably have a more robust hacknet script that will run for longer. So if we're on like our 11th reset, like we're super in game. We'll run something called HNet full and this script doesn't exist and this script doesn't exist. So don't worry why you haven't seen it. But we can do other stuff in here too. Um, like for example, if player software is I think it's called SSH. So if we're starting with the brute SSH software, when we first boot in, um, that means that we've already been through sector 12. Uh, or is it CyberSec? I forget, one of them has the, uh, it's called cache root. Basically when you spawn, you spawn with a million dollars in brute SSH. But we wanna check that. And if we've already got cache root, I think, well, actually if we don't have cache root, um, cause it's gonna be really important early on to get that software very quickly and it's worth trading off a little bit of um uh like growth potential to get that because it's going to increase our potential very very fast so what i'm getting at is i want to run max cash um just for just until we have it I'll probably do a while loop. And then after that's done, let's kill it. So we'll create a variable called PID. And then PID will become NS run max cache. Let's say and not PID or else this will just run forever. Actually, hold on. Oh, I see, I need to do a do while. Right, and then I want, because at the end I want to NS kill PID, that's the goal. Uh, actually, I can just do try and let's kill PID. Then I don't need the do while. Perfect. So while we don't have the software, if we haven't already spawned max cache, we don't have a PID yet, spawn max cache and get the PID. I think NS run gives you a PID. Yeah, it returns a number. And so the first time through, we won't have a PID, we'll run max cache. Then on the second time through, we will have a PID and we won't run max cache again, we'll just sleep. And then once we have the SSH software, we will leave maxcache.js. And then after that's done, we'll kill the PID.
and then run um, no this isn't right problem is this is going to run twice Probably just take out this line because we're always going to run it or we're going to run something and we can put additional logic down here. Problem is what if we get like what if we run this and then just leave? I guess that's on us, right? Because it's just going to keep there, try, keep, keep running through this loop trying to hack servers with no money. Yeah, we'll just have to not do that. <laughs> Seems fine. Let me kill all. And then let me see. We said if status is less than 10, we're going to run hnet. And then we're going to run go at the end. So let's just see if this works. It should do functionally nothing. because we've already got HackNet. But it did spawn go.js, so I think we're in the clear here. Oh. We need to create SBIN market and HNet full. Maybe that'll be the, uh, the next video. Now, I think I'll end this here because the problem with this script I go too deep into the like if you're if you're an experienced player you know exactly what the point of the script is because you're going to want to change what runs here you're going to want completely different scripts to run at certain points uh, but if i go too deep into it it'll spoil quite a bit of stuff this gets to the the gist of what we're going for yeah well i'll end the video here and start another one for the market script and hnet full thanks for watching